In this session, I'm going to show you the four key areas to consider to make your cloud native transformation successful and to get speed, efficiency, and performance for your network deployments. My name is Peter Wörndle, and I'm a senior expert in deployment architectures in cloud software and services at Ericsson. Over the last few years, I've been guiding applications in their cloud native transformation, and I've also guided some of our customers in their cloud native transformation. We're now extending this experience to all of our customers, helping them to transform their networks. We've learned a lot from our own cloud native transformation and from the cloud native transformation we went on with service providers so far. We've seen that successfully deploying cloud native 5G core requires us to look at all the four areas I'm going to show you not in isolation, but with a holistic approach. We've also discovered a common misconception that cloud native is the goal, but it's actually not. The goal is to be more efficient, to be more flexible, and to be more performant in the networks. The first of the four areas is application design. Of course, we know that you will have multiple applications in your networks, not all of them coming from sources from where you can control the design. But it's important to understand how applications and cloud native applications are built to understand how they behave. The first main attribute of cloud native applications is that they're not a monolithic chunk of software anymore, but a collection of independent microservices. Precisely this decomposition allows us to be more mindful about the state the applications carry. We have state which is only valid for a short period of time, like the state we use to set up a session, and we have state which we may have to store for years, like charging data records. For microservice-based architecture, we can now design the microservices according to the state they store, meaning we can have entirely stateless microservices if they don't carry any relevant state, or we can find the right replication and resiliency mechanisms for the data the microservices carry. The resiliency and the redundancy for the microservice we get by replicating the microservice instances and replicating, therefore, the state they store. We can use the same replication mechanisms for scaling, meaning we can adopt the capacity of a microservice and the amount of instances we have to the traffic demands you have at this point in time, which gives us a far more precise and targeted scaling mechanism than what we had before. Lastly, the independence of the microservices allows us to independently lifecycle them, helping us to provide smaller, more frequent updates with minimal impact, which helps you to keep your software up to date and stay on top of network security. The second area is technology. The technology ecosystem around Kubernetes and cloud native is just amazing to me as an engineer. The innovation happening in this field is also accelerating the telecom transformation towards cloud native. For example, the decomposition we do today in a microservice-based design would not have been possible without containers and Kubernetes. Kubernetes operators help us to simplify complex microservices and their lifecycle management. These operators complement the tools we have for monitoring and automation in the ecosystem already. It's important to note that using this technology is not the goal of the cloud native transformation. It helps us to proceed and progress on the cloud native transformation. The third area is ways of working and processes. And this is where you as a service provider play a major role. To leverage the innovation in the cloud native ecosystem, to counteract security threats, and to respond to the efficiency needs in the networks, we need to keep the software up to date in your networks. This requires us to reduce the complexity of the software change process and to apply automation wherever possible. We need to go away from big bang software upgrades into continuous software flow. First, of course, into your staging environments and then eventually up into the production environments. Via at Ericsson, we gear up by providing smaller chunks more frequently by adopting CI-CD both in our development processes as well as in the delivery into your production and into your staging environments. And we're giving you the correct tools to make that transformation happen. 
This gets me to the fourth and last area. Of course, we know that managing change in a network and managing software change in a network is a challenging task. Therefore, we want to provide you with the right tools to manage this change. One of the main characteristics we need to have in these types of tools is that we separate between the functionality a network function provides and the realization of that network function in, for example, microservices. Take an AMF as an example. The functionality of that AMF will stay fairly constant over time, while the realization in the form of microservices and software artifacts will continuously change with new software updates. Management systems need to cater for this type of different timescales we have in between the functionality and the realization. Therefore, we have to apply a strict separation between the functional domain and the realization domain. This separation also allows us now to separate the telco-specific parts in the functional domain from a very generic realization domain. Software lifecycle management in the realization domain becomes a problem or becomes a challenge which we can solve for a multitude of different applications, not only network functions, but any type of application. We are also now in the position to apply industry best practices, such as GitOps for this type of realization domain. Let me summarize the four key areas we need to look at. First, the cloud native application design helps us to adopt innovation far more efficiently. It helps us to optimize microservices for the state they carry and for the load they have to carry by scaling them. Two, the technology around containers and Kubernetes provides an ecosystem with rapid innovation and helps us to efficiently build and manage cloud native applications. Three, we need to evolve the ways of working and processes to leverage the innovation in the cloud native ecosystem, to address the capacity needs in the networks and to stay on top of network security. Four, the tools in the management and orchestration space help us to complete the cloud native transformation and to gain speed, efficiency, and performance. The cloud native journey is a journey we're on together as an industry. Let's make it happen together and imagine what's possible. <laughs>